Hey guys, well I was out uh, doing some imaging a couple of days ago when I actually had some a rare combination of good weather, no moon, and no wind, uh, but had lots of humidity. Uh, anyway, it was a good opportunity to uh, put on the dew shield at the end of my SCT. And in this case, I have the AstroZap non-heated uh, dew shield. It uh, just is a foam type dew shield. It fits over the end. It's quite secure. It's got a Velcro strap along a seam along the vertical uh, in this picture, vertical line stays on quite well. I also put on the dew strap uh, wrapped around the base of the dew shield. I wanted to share some results with you and some additional testing I've done trying to understand where the uh, strengths and weaknesses of this system are and how to improve it. All right, so a couple of days back, I had put out a, a video showing the performance of my dew strap. This is the do not 33 inch long do not dew strap. In this time, in this case, it was it was placed right behind the cell. I'd also tried it wrapped around the end of the cell. That did not work. And on nights when the dew point came within five degrees of the outside temperature, I was basically finding that this wasn't working either. So the dew strap alone was not uh, solving the problem. I was doing over at each opportunity. And of course, you lose uh, plenty of imaging time when uh, when that happens so now a couple of nights ago i had very good weather no wind so i felt okay using the dew shield and as you can see here i've got the dew shield mounted at the end of the set with the dew strap wrapped around that base just on the just outside the uh, rails the bottom and top rails on the set so it's wrapped around uh, even helping to hold the the dew shield on however the dew shield is fairly tight around the the end of the set and there's no danger of it falling off. But this helps. Uh, one thing you might notice or I'll comment on is that over here the 33 inch long dew strap wraps around and the heated element is in full contact with the OTA body all the way around. Over here with the larger diameter of the dew shield that same 33 inch strap leaves probably about four inches where the, there is no heating element in contact with the dew shield. So there is that little bit of inefficiency when you wrap the dew strap around the dew shield. This was the configuration I was testing and this was probably one of the most challenging nights from the perspective of uh, outside temperature and dew point that I've I have come across. But uh, throughout the night and even in the next morning when I go in to, to go out to bring in the OTA there was no dew at all on the corrector plate. So this combination of the dew shield and the dew strap did a very good job in what what I like to say is probably the most challenging environment from a dew perspective uh, that you can get. So this was very successful. And uh, now the question is, did the dew strap help? Uh, I don't know if we're seeing an effect that is uh, just the dew shield or if heating provided by the dew strap uh, was also beneficial here. And that's uh, a couple of things I wanted to take a look at. First of all, I want to confirm that the dew strap is actually working. I've had my doubts in the past. And uh, second, I want to see kind of quantify the extent to which the heating provided by the dew strap is heating the air inside the dew shield. Well, here's that dew strap uh, laid out, not in contact. The heating element is on this side, not in contact with anything. I was using a an infrared thermometer here and measuring along the length as it was heating up. This measurement was taken before I had applied any heat, so I had a 25 degrees C uh, baseline or ambient temperature when there's no heating applied. The second thing I wanted to check out in this little testing I was doing here, right in my setup, there, the dew strap has has its own six foot cable but it's not long enough to reach down to the uh, box where I have the ultimate power box and so I have yet another 10 foot fairly large diameter but a 10 foot long extension cable so I wanted to see if there was any impact on having that extra 10 feet of cable that it might be sacrificing some of the heating capability of the dew strap. And so I plugged the uh, dew strap in, powered it up with the ultimate power box just as I do at night and uh, monitored the temperature all along the strap by moving the infrared dot all along the dew strap. And then I let it cool back down to ambient. I removed the 10 foot extension cable, plugged just the dew strap directly into the ultimate power box, heated it up and did the experiment uh, once again. 
And basically, I found the same thing. All right, the ambient temperature started off at 25 degrees C. It got up to a maximum, and it was not uniform along the length. Some of that could be because the the as the strap is laying on the table, there are gaps where it's not in contact, and other places where it is in contact with the table, that could be affecting the uniformity of the results that I was seeing. But uh, at any rate, I saw a maximum uh, temperature of 50 degrees when I just had the six-foot cable of the dew strap plugged in. I saw about 48 degrees C, though, uh, when I had the 10-foot cable extension in. So at those measurements, so that difference could simply be measurement error, just where I happened to uh, point the, the uh, infrared pointer at to take the temperature, uh, but uh, it convinced me that A, the dew strap is in fact working, and it convinced me that the 10-foot cable is not a showstopper. It's not uh, dramatically, uh, certainly, maybe even at all, affecting the temperature, the delta T that I'm getting out of the heating strap. So that was a good finding. The second thing I wanted to do uh, in, this, in this test, I took the dew shield set on the table as shown here, and then I wrapped the dew strap around the base of it just as it is when I'm I've got it attached in the uh, to the SCT and I'm using these little uh, Elatech data loggers uh, temperature data loggers I bought them uh, some time back I wanted to do a test on my Telegizmos 365 cover and I had one of them mounted under the cover during a day uh, I think it might have been a March day and and another one mounted in the shade not under the cover and I was uh, a little dismayed to learn <laughs> that there's quite a delta T. There's an additional 20 degrees under the cover, uh, which is great if you live in a cold climate. But uh, when you live in Texas, the last thing you know you want is another 20 degrees tacked onto the already uh, hot temperatures outside. So anyway, it was the findings from these little sensors here that convinced me not to leave my OTA and cameras outside anymore. Although I do leave the mount outside for for several days uh, during. Uh, during some good imaging weather. In this example, I had one of the sensors pushed up close to adjacent to the wall, and then I placed the other sensor right here in the center. So what I wanted to see is if this dew strap is in fact heating the air uh, right near where the corrector plate would be. And in this case, the corrector plate, so to speak, is the base of the table that you see there. And here are the results. As you might expect around the edge when you turn on the power to the dew strap, the temperature rises. It's a more slow, it's a slower rise of what I saw when the dew strap was not contacting anything in my earlier testing, but that's to be expected here. The heat dissipates and uh, kind of moves up the, the foam core a bit as a way of getting out. So it takes a little while longer, about an hour roughly, to reach its steady state condition. But uh, as you might guess, the sensor close to the wall of the dew, sh of the dew shield the outer diameter of the scope, is registering a larger uh, and faster temperature rise than does the sensor in the center of the dew shield where obviously the secondary mirror is, but the inner radius of your corrector plate. Now here I saw uh, about a plus four degree increment in the temperature. While I may not have captured the full maximum, it looks like it certainly is bending over and becoming asymptotic to a steady state condition. So it's maybe in the four to five degree range, which is, is not bad. It's not significant. Remember we measured a delta T of the heating element alone at 25 degrees. So that we've lost quite a bit of that heat uh, into uh, propagation up this foam core here. So now, 1.5 degrees at the center is not much at all. Now, you could argue that, yeah, the center is where the secondary mirror is, and the actual radius of the, the inner radius of the corrector plate is out here somewhere. Uh, but I guess I would, I would kind of conclude that uh, you can expect something on the order of maybe three, two to three degrees in the inner radius of the corrector plate and about four to five degrees on the outer uh, diameter of the corrector plate. The four to five degrees it might be a sufficient increase to get you some headroom between the temperature and the the outside temperature and the dew point, but uh, a couple of degrees provided near the center may not be. Let's go on to some uh, takeaways from my little experiment here. I have a single 33 inch long do not do strap wrapped around the circumference of the SCT, and it, it doesn't work on its own. Uh, there are any night where the dew point is approaching very close to the outside temperature, I just can't prevent dew from forming. So that dew, one dew strap is not going to solve 
the problem on high demand nights. Uh, on the other hand, when I used my dew shield in combination with the two strap, I got very good results. It uh, prevented dew from forming uh, throughout the entire night on probably the most challenging uh, dew forming night that I've seen in a long time. So that proved to be very successful. So I think we're on the right track there. Uh, the measured peak delta T, if you will, along the dew strap when it's not connected to anything is about 25 degrees C, which is pretty good. That's a pretty good bit of heating it's doing, uh, again, when it's not connected to anything. Uh, but mostly I just wanted to confirm that the darn dew strap is in fact working, and it is. And I also confirmed that uh, having a long extension cable, and as I do in my case, does not actually uh, impair its performance to any significant degree. I made some measurements of the heating of the air inside the what would be adjacent to the corrector plate and inside the dew shield, and I found about a an increase in temperature of about 4C around the outer perimeter, which is pretty good. That's closest to where the dew strap would be mounted but only about one and a half to two degrees C uh, near the inner diameter of the corrector plate. That may not be enough to buy you protection against the dew forming. What that's really saying is the dew shield is the biggest benefit here, not so much the heating provided by the dew strap. One of the big problems is that the dew shield, particularly for my SCT and my mount, it really increases the sensitivity to the wind to the point that if there's anything but like a moderate wind, there's almost no point in having the dew shield on because your guiding is so poor that you can't get good photographs. So you're either killed by the dew or killed by the poor guiding with the uh, high wind sensitivity with the dew shield attached. So that's a, that's a challenge. Otherwise, I would use the dew shield all the time. So the first thing I think I want to do is probably experiment with some shorter length dew shields. In this case, I'll probably use a poster board that I can cut up and just apply and just see if I can cut the length down of that fairly long dew shield that I have to a shorter length and maybe that in combination with the uh, dew strap will keep the air temperature high enough next to the corrector plate that I will prevent dew. Based on the measurements that adding a second dew strap next to the to the dew strap I already am, am putting on there would probably help uh, quite a bit. Uh, it might bring up the inner the temperature at the around the inner radius of the corrector plate enough to actually g get some true benefit from it. So that's something worth considering. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for hanging in there, and I'll talk to you later.